typically I try to handhold absolutely as much as I can. But um, in, in the evening time when I'm shooting long exposures, anything really over 15 seconds, that's when I pull out my tripod. And I tend to be <laughs> very liberal with what I use as a tripod. It could be a rock, it could be, you know, a, uh, a steady hand, I don't know. But, but when I want to get really sharp, tack sharp images at night, especially when I'm getting stars moving, when I want to get a fire that's kind of lighting up or water that's looking really milky, that's when I put my tripod down and I'm usually shooting somewhere between, um, you know, a sixth of a second to, you know, a couple hours. Um, typically, for me, I love to use ultralight tripods, carbon fiber. Um, I'm not somebody who's taking mine on and off all the time. I usually just attach my camera and fold the legs and put it over my shoulder and move with it. So um, I like light tripods that can be shoved in a backpack, can be kind of mobile and taken with you anywhere. Um, I tend to take this one backpacking a lot, um, shot kind of all over the world with it, and usually the, the lighter equipment works better. One thing people have a problem with is they feel like the lighter ones vibrate, and when I have that issue, I usually just attach some weight to it, a little carabiner or a string, attach a backpack to the bottom, it holds it super firm. So the A7S, is, it's one of the best cameras I've ever used for, for low light. Uh, when I say low light, I basically mean that it has a super sensitive ISO range. Um, its native ISO setting is 1600, which means that it can basically output beautiful images like at, at a very high ISO. Most cameras you would never even want to put there. Um, this camera for me is nice because it's kind of uh, does it all for me. Um, it's not really the camera I would go and want to shoot big billboards with or big, huge, you know, gigantic, you know, images to be printed, but it's something that um, works great for low light, great for editorial, magazines, um, like, you know, social media, digital web, and uh, it's light, small, and it's full frame. So say you don't have a camera that can shoot super low light. Well, the lucky part is that you can still get away with just shooting a longer exposure. Uh, right now, my settings are right around one second at 1600 ISO. Um, but if you had a camera that wasn't as sensitive to light, you could just basically bump your shutter speed down to maybe five seconds, 10 seconds, 18 seconds, um, and you could still get amazing, really, really good results. The difference is that you're, you're gonna have a little more movement in your subjects. One of my favorite things to shoot is, is shooting low light, shooting long exposures, but having people or objects in them. Um, it kind of gives a surreal nature to the images. Um, having people standing around a fire or having you know, someone kind of far off in the distance lit up some way or, or light painting um, and being able to do that, um, I find that having a really sensitive, a camera that's really sensitive to light helps to create that movement in the image. One of the lenses I, uh, I always try to bring is a, a specialty lens and this is a 24-1.4 uh, and this is really, really set up for night photography. Um, it's, it's mainly when I use it because I, I like the shallow depth of field. Uh, but more importantly, I like how much light it lets in. So typically um, with this lens, I'll be taking a step back, you know, trying to get the entire scene and allowing myself to shoot a lower shutter speed because I, ha I have a smaller f-stop. So I can let in more light, right? Um, so I'm gonna throw this on my camera and uh, see if I can crank my ISO down a little bit and actually crank my shutter speed up from maybe like a second and a half to like a sixth of a second. For shooting at night, there's a lot of different sources of light you can use, and everyone has their own personal preference. Headlights work great, flashlights, car lights, um, uh, there's obviously like studio strobes and things like that you can use, or um, any other type of strobe or flash. Um, and then those are all kind of all the, all the, the um, I wouldn't call them the, you know, fake lighting, but essentially that's kind of more of like the tungsten, right, <laughs> light? Um, so the, all those sources would be more of like artificial light. Um, and then you have your, your kind of natural lights, you know, your warm tones. So long exposure photography is, is really kind of the art of, of shooting um, a shutter speed that is meant to absorb light, right? So to absorb light, you really want to have something um, below a sixth of a second, you know, where your camera must be on a tripod. Um, I find that, you know, typically when I'm shooting long exposures, I'm shooting you know, a sixth of a second, one second, five seconds, 30 seconds, or multiple hours. Um, and all of those provide different results, but ultimately they're trying to do the same thing. You're trying to bring light to a subject that's pretty dark or dim. Uh, long exposures can usually be shot 
in the evening, around a campfire, around the moonlight, if you're trying to capture the stars, if you're trying to capture moving lights of cars on a freeway and you want to shoot multiple exposures, it can really be done in a, in a totally um, a, a bunch of different ways, but really it's, it's all about kind of the end result of, of giving yourself a, um, a bright scene from something that was basically in the evening or dark. There, there are times when you'll shoot long exposures where you really kind of want to focus on, on getting maybe something really abstract. And that's typically when I'll lay my camera out. You know, maybe I'm camping, maybe I'm, I'm car camping, I don't know, but, but I'm, I'm somewhere where I'm not going to get a bunch of ambient light, meaning I'm not going to get cars driving by or people walking by with headlamps. And maybe I'm out somewhere where it's totally dark. Um, and what I would do is I'd set my camera out for maybe an hour, two hours, and I would just basically let my camera absorb all the light. And, and the results from that can be really cool. You can have star trails circling around something, or you can have you know, the sun rising with some stars above it. Um, it can give you really unique results, but it's usually complete trial and error. So you typically at the end of the night, when I'm done kind of shooting all the scenes that I, I wanted to set up or, or shoot, I would just set up my camera, let it run, and go to bed. Maybe set myself a timer so that I get up and turn it off in the middle of the night. Or, let it run till it dies and wake up and just see my results. It's usually kind of like unwrapping a present. You just never really know what it's gonna be. So right now, when I'm shooting this campfire scene, I'm actually shooting um, under 30 seconds. So every camera typically has a shutter inside that will let you do 30 second exposures. Um, when you wanna go above 30 second exposures, that's when you have to use a cable release. Cable release is a small, um, object basically that plugs into your camera and gives you a remote trigger that you can lock and hold. Um, so typically if you want to shoot a multiple hour exposure or 30 minutes or five minutes, you have to time it yourself and you basically lock that cable release, let it go, come back and unlock it. Um, cable releases are also really, really good for when you want to have absolutely no camera vibration. So if you don't want to be touching your camera shooting the trigger yourself and you want to be standing away shooting it, that's a form of using a cable release. Um, that can also be super effective during the day as well. Um, one of the important things about cable releases too is that, they, uh, is that not all of them are wired. You can also use infrared releases, which can uh, actually go right to most cameras, little infrared sensor or your cell phone, um, which is also a really cool way to, to use the technology. Um, so you can, you can effectively use a, a bunch of different ways to release your camera um, if you don't want to touch it. So for nighttime photography, I would say one, one type of camera I really shy away from is, is my cell phone. I typically, you know, will shoot, for me at least, I'll shoot my phone, you know, sort of, you know, 20 minutes before sunset, um, or 20 minutes after sunrise till about, you know, 20 minutes before sunset because one thing that the phone doesn't do super well is low light right now. And um, I have found that, you know, it, it can really, do an amazing job midday. It can do an amazing job when the light is getting really good, but if you wanna shoot that really contrasty, um, you know, sun going down, or if you wanna shoot a longer exposure, it really brings a lot of noise to the image because you can't control your ISO and all your settings.